All right, I'm going to try to make a semi-quick video for Welder 2013 who asked me for some help regarding something they're trying to cut out and they're having problems. So I'm just going to go through a basic tutorial as to how to correctly create a part so they aren't getting um, some stuff dropping out. And in addition to this, somebody had commented on one of my videos that I move a little too fast with some of the tools. So um, I'm going to just try to slow down, and if I remember where they're at, I'll try to point them out instead of trying to use the hotkeys all the time. Um, so here we go. I have a 2 by 4 table, so this kind of gives you an idea how big these are. Um, Welder2013 had asked if I could create a TR inside of a circle with a kind of a maybe a 1 inch circle on the outside. To and keep the parts from dropping out every time they cut it, it's not working out. So um, I can't remember where the TR is that he had pointed to, so I just created a couple of them here for an example. And this font is LaGriff. I don't remember what this one is. Uh, News GBEE. -E. It's not a standard font. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do this uh, correctly to keep things parts from dropping out. So what I'm going to do is create the circle that you'd requested. And I'm just kind of making it up as I go along. I don't know what size of circle you're shooting for. This one is happens to be about 15 and a half inches, probably bigger than what you're shooting for. But that's fine. I'm going to shrink the circle down. Right now I'm not going for a specific size so much as I am just a specific layout and look. Okay, so right now I created this circle just so it touches on a few key points. Um, I'm going to move this up, shrink it down a little. All right, so that looks decent to me. Um, what I'm going to do now is create a one inch circle, a, a circle that's one inch bigger all the way around than this. Um, you have to realize there's two sides there, so I can't make it one inch bigger. I'm going to do control D to duplicate or edit duplicate and instead of 13.351 which is one inch bigger I'm going to make it 14.351 which is in reality two inches bigger but when you center these circles on each other it'll be one inch on the top one inch on the bottom. To circle these I'm going to highlight my two objects the one I want to center it on I select last I'm holding down my shift key and selecting these I do not remember where the alignment tool is, so I'm going to go ahead and press Alt-K, which brings up my alignment tool. I always have this aligned to last object selected, at least 99% of the time. And I'm going to click the center and center. So that centered these two objects. Now, I'm dealing with three different objects at this point. If I highlight all of these, look at this up in the top left corner, three objects. So if I do a toggle of my show fill, which is under... Um, view show fill alt s is what I'll use you can see these are all single objects right now um, so I'm going first thing I'm going to do is combine these circles shift click them both and do an XOR weld and when I do that and toggle my show fill which is my alt s now I have two objects if I highlight this I have two objects because these two circles have been combined into one object and I also have this object which is its own object if you were to try to cut this out right now as is, the TR will be cut out, and then it'll try to go, or, or it'll cut the circle first, depending on how you uh, set things up, but um, then it'll go and try to cut the other object, and, and they're not going, going to be one object. So, Alt-S to toggle my fill. What you have to do is combine these. So, select them, and do a basic weld, and now, you can see up here I have one single object. It just says polyarch at this point, but it's one single object. Now if I do an alt S to toggle my show, fill, it looks the same as it did before, but it is one object at this point. And now you just go ahead and apply a toolpath to it. So machine, create toolpath, actually highlight it. Machine, create toolpath, mail. Material doesn't matter on plasma. Make sure you have the right tool. Make sure you're set on climbing. Conventional is for routers, climbing is for plasma. It's going to make your torch cut um, with the best edge against the product. Um, as the torch moves away from you, the right hand side of the torch cuts square and cleaner. And then lead outs, lead ins, I don't usually do a lead out, but a lead in line 90 degrees, uh, 0.125 has worked out well for me, even on from quarter inch down is what I usually cut. 
So you can see a couple of lines in here now. Um, I'm going to come up here and select this button to show tool paths only. If I zoom in on these tool paths, the lead-ins aren't always perfect. The, if this one pierces right here, it's kind of right in that path and it might leave a divot. So I'll just move that away into the material that's waste. Um, here's another one. That one's okay. And then here's our final one, which is actually okay, but I'm just going to move it. Now if I were to export this, um, first of all, let me bring everything back in. I have m more than just toolpaths here. I have design and toolpaths. So I'm going to do show toolpaths only. Let me just move it so you get an idea. And now I'm showing er show everything. If I were to try to cut this out and import it into the Torchmate software, it's going to try to cut this, this, and this. So what, what I always do is I get rid of these and just have the toolpath. Now let me go ahead and just export this. Actually I'm going to shrink it down just for the sake of time. A little five inch object. So I'm just going to make sure it's on my material. Zero, zero. Um, file, export. I'm going to export it to my desktop. Call it welder test. Make sure that my format, I like exporting in polyarc format. And now if I go and open up my TorchMate software, I'm not going to connect because this computer actually isn't connected to my system. You go File, Import DXF. I called it Welder Test, so I'm going to open that. Where do you want your um, G-code file saved? I'll just say on my desktop for now. I usually don't touch anything in here. You can pause it and look at the options that I have set. But I will tweak the feed rate. If I were to cut this out at my 16 gauge material, I'll just go ahead and leave it 150 inches, so I'll say OK. It'll import the file. Um, in my case, because I have multiple tools, tools, I have to select plasma. You shouldn't have to, but if I go ahead and um, let me machine zero all. And that's fine. It's just complaining. Just give it a second. That I'm. It's complaining that I'm going outside of my tool paths or my my, my machine um, paths. Okay. So now if I just go ahead and hit start, and let me adjust my screen. I have to shrink my screen down because I this little recording icon is covering up stuff. So go ahead and hit start. You'll see that it'll come and it'll cut the inside paths first. Notice the direction that it's cutting. If you're standing behind the torch, the right hand side is the one that's doing all the cutting. That's the way you want it. When it goes around, right now it's going you know, counterclockwise, but when you go to the outside, it's going to switch directions. So as you can see, by doing all of this, it's all one piece and when it's cut out nothing is being dropped in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now I'm going to go back in here, let's see, into this. Control Z to get back all my objects and I'm going to basically do the same thing but with some different text. There's two things I want to cover here. Um, the first thing is is if you're cutting this out of let's just say a square plate. Control D to duplicate this now if you were to take these two items and do an XOR weld on them, the XOR weld will work. And if you do an Alt S, it's going to look fine. However, if you go and cut this out as is, it's going to look like this. And that's not what you want. So in order to combine these, I'm going to leave it in the show fill section for now just to show you what it would look like. But in order to combine these, you need to bridge this. So I like bridging it with a square or something. And you can you can come in here and line this up and try to get it right and bridge it. And now you can see that that centerpiece won't drop. Now I'm going to change my show fill. Um, you would have to combine these in order to do that. Um, I'm going to I'm going to control Z this and break these apart at this point. So the reason why is I need to actually adjust my TR before welding doing an XOR weld to this piece. So 
I need to adjust the R. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I want to bridge that piece for reasons explained. And you don't have to get it lined up exactly with this edge. Um, I used to do that. It's not, it's not needed. And now you can take this and this and you can do an XOR weld on them. And now that I've done the XOR weld, I can come in here and delete these pieces. That We now have our bridge, as you can see. I just double click on these and delete, delete all these points my delete key or you can right click and do the trash can option. Now control G to group them just so I can move them together. Now if I do an alt S um, you can see what it looks like with a fill. And if I combine these and do an XOR weld on them and do an alt S to show my fill you can see that I have this piece bridged and it will not drop out at this point. If I highlight this, it's called polyarch poly number two. Um, if you had multiple objects there, it would tell you how many objects um, you have. I have one object here. Basically, if I were to apply a tool path as I did before, everything would cut out fine. However, um, when you're not cutting something out of a piece of material like that, and you're going to have a male part, you don't have to worry about that. And in this case, you won't have to worry about that. This case meaning the same circle th options we were doing before. Alt S to toggle the fill. And I'm going to take this circle, bring it over here by my TR, and I'm just going to shrink it down just to kind of size things correctly. Highlight out everything. Alt K brings up my alignment tool. And I'm going to shrink the circle down just a little bit more. Highlight everything. Control K remembers your last alignment tool setting. Actually, I don't like the way that looks. So I'm going to break this apart. This is text. You can go and try to tweak the text with current options and whatever, but you can also break it apart. So Control B or Machine Break Path, I don't know, Arrange Break Path. And now you have three objects here this being one object, the outside of the R being one object, T is one object. So let's combine these again with an XOR weld. Now I have two objects. And I'm just going to run these into each other. And I'm going to combine them with a basic weld. The basic weld combined them. Now I'm going to center these. Control K. Sorry, that's my cell phone telling me I've got a message. I'm going to resize this TR just a little bit. Center it again by highly, highlighting everything. Control K. That looks good to me. So now I want to make this circle a little bit bigger. Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to add two inches. And because this uh, proportional scaling is checked, it will do it in both directions. I'm going to select my circle with a shift click. Control K to center those. I'm sorry if I'm moving fast. I'm using the same tools over and over and over. Um, so I'm hoping that you're picking that up. It's not something new I'm introducing. I'm going to highlight everything uh, minus the TR. Do a, an XOR weld. If I do Alt S to show everything, here's, here's my new look. However, these are two objects. If you go to cut this out at this point, you're going to have things drop in the middle. So combine them. Combine everything with a basic weld. Now they're one object, as you can see up in the top left corner. And I can apply a tool path to this. Machine create tool path, mail, and go through those steps again. Or I can, can come up here and click on the uh, icon right here to do the same thing. Now I'm going to show my tool path only, actually. And I got another message. And another one. All right, so here's my path, my tool path. I can export this, import it. It'll cut it out just fine. And if this does not answer your question on Weather 2013, let me know in the comments. And I can uh, tweak it or try to answer your questions directly or possibly even create another video. Anyway, I hope that helps.